Hey y'all, CJ here from Smoky Beginnings. Feeling that craving for cheesy goodness, but bored with the same old loaded cheese fries? Well, get ready to revolutionize your snack game because today we're ditching the fries and diving headfirst into loaded pulled pork tater tots. We're talking about crispy tater tots smothered in a killer cheese sauce, piled high with juicy pulled pork and topped with all your favorites. And trust me, this isn't your average tater tot recipe. I'm gonna show you how to smoke the pork to perfection, avoid those dry and flavorless pitfalls, and create a flavor explosion that'll have you reaching for seconds. And maybe thirds. Maybe fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, eighths. You get the point. So are you ready to ditch the boring and embrace the ultimate comfort food upgrade? Then stick around because in this video, I'm giving you all the secrets to making these loaded pulled pork tater tots right at home. Let's go. Okay, let's start by preparing our pork shoulder, our butt for the smoker. It is a super simple process, but trust me, the results will have everyone begging for more. First things first, we gotta score that fat cap. Scoring the fat cap is key. It creates channels for smoke and seasoning to infuse the meat all the way through. All you have to do is cut some very shallow vertical and horizontal lines within the fat cap. Next up, binder time. I swear by mustard as a binder, a tip I picked up from my dad back in the backyard barbecue grilling days. But hey, you can use mayo, water, even olive oil if that's how you learned. Now let's talk seasoning. Pork shoulder is a flavor chameleon. You can go sweet, savory, spicy, it really doesn't matter. This time, I'm rocking Fire and Smoke Society's Sweet Preacher Rub, but the choice is yours. Leave this beauty out for about 30 minutes to soak up all the goodness. And hey, speaking of pulled pork perfection, I've got a whole video dedicated to making killer pulled pork sandwiches. Stick around to the end of this video where I'll leave a link to that video. And while I have you here, make sure to like and subscribe. Doing so helps small channels like me deliver our content to others and grow the channel. All right, folks, smoker time. Today, we're using the Pit Barrel Cooker's Vertical Magic to create some smoky pulled pork perfection. This thing works a little differently than your average smoker. It uses the hanging method. Meat goes up top, heat source goes down below, and as the smoky goodness rises, it bathes the pork in deliciousness the whole time it cooks. The result, melt in your mouth, juicy pulled pork that's second to none. I've got a link in the description below if you're interested in learning more about this Pit Barrel Cooker. So let's move on to lighting up a full charcoal chimney. Once those clothes are glowing red and covered in ash like a good cigar, we know they're ready to go. Dump the lit coals right on top of the unlit coals in the basket. We're going to be smoking for a while here, probably about six to seven hours. So we need a full basket to keep things going strong. Plan on about 15 minutes for the chimney to get things going and another 15 for the basket to heat up. We're aiming for a smoker temp of 275 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 135 to 148 degrees Celsius. While we're waiting on the smoker to come up to temp and the pork shorter is soaking up the seasoning, let's turn our attention over to making an insanely killer cheese sauce. We'll start off by making the base or what some people call a roux. We'll add butter to a saucepan that is on a stove over medium heat. Allow the butter to melt and become liquid. Then it's time to add some flour. I'll leave a link to the full recipe in the comment. Mix in enough flour to make the butter and flour mixture into a paste. Then add some heavy cream, buttermilk, or whole milk to thin out the mixture. You want the mixture to be able to coat the back of the spoon and not be too liquidy. Once the mixture is thinned out, we can add our cheese, which today I have a mixture of sharp cheddar and Colby Jack. Allow the cheese to melt. I found that freshly grated cheese melts better than blocks of cheese or the shredded cheese that you would buy at the grocery store. Once the cheese is melted, you can add the seasoning, which is salt, pepper, paprika, mustard powder, and if you want to kick it up a notch, some dashes of hot sauce. While the flavors are melting, it's time to add the pork shorter to the smoker. Let this bad boy chill for about an hour, then we'll check in and see how it's doing. One hour down, and guess what? We're not done yet. I know, I know, patience is a virtue, especially when it comes to smoking, but this first check-in is crucial. Of course, we're not looking for it to be finished. What we're after is the bark development, smoker temperature, and how the charcoal is burning. Every smoke is different, and by keeping an eye on things, we can adjust as needed. So far, so good, no complaints from the bark department, temperature seems on point, and the coals are doing their job. We'll give it another 30 minutes to an hour and check back in. Two hours in, and this pork shoulder is looking mighty fine. Just look at that rich color. Let's do a little science experiment to see if the bark is set. If my finger comes away clean, 
we're in business. If it picks up some seasoning, that means the bark needs more time to develop. And the verdict is bark set. Next up, we're gonna spritz the pork shoulder with a 50-50 mix of apple juice and water. We'll keep this spritzing party going every 30 minutes until we wrap the pork butt. Through the magic of time and some serious editing magic, we hit our first temperature target of 155 degrees Fahrenheit at the six hour mark. It took a bit longer than usual, and I gotta be honest, I think the Florida weather played a part. We're used to smoking at 90 degrees, not 60. Plus, all the spritzing can cool things down a bit. As every time you open a smoker, we're letting the heat out and the smoker has to come back up to temp. But hey, that's all part of this backyard barbecue game, right? Now with 155 degrees under our belt, it's time to wrap the pork shoulder in aluminum foil. This does two things. It helps the meat avoid the dreaded stall, a period where the temperature seems to flatline and never goes up, and it speeds up the cooking process. But before we completely seal it up, let's take a moment to appreciate this beauty. Seriously, doesn't this look amazing? All right, drill time is over. Double wrap the pork shoulder nice and tight. You can add pats of butter, some apple juice, or even a splash of beer for an extra kick. But honestly, even without any of those extras, it's gonna be delicious. From here, it's pretty hands off. Just chill with your grill and wait for the magic to happen. We're looking for an internal temperature of 200 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it hits that sweet spot, pull it off the smoker and let it rest. You can do this in the oven or cooler, doesn't matter. The key is to let the temperature come down slowly, allowing those juices to redistribute throughout the meat. That's what makes it fall apart tender and oh so flavorful. After the long cook, give your pork shoulder a rest of one to two hours. This resting time is crucial for juicy pulled pork. And here's why. During cooking, the muscle fibers in the pork contract and squeeze out some of the delicious juices. Resting allows the muscle fibers to relax and those juices to redistribute throughout the meat, ensuring a moist and flavorful end product. Now, while the one pound to 10 minute rule is a general guideline, it's not always necessary. The best indicator of resting time is the internal temperature of the pork. Aim for the pork to reach an internal temperature of 140 degrees to 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees to 70 degrees Celsius after resting. Let's prep our toppings. We've got a vibrant mix of classic ingredients that will add freshness and a punch to every bite. First up, we have some juicy red tomatoes. I like to dice them finely so they burst with flavor in every bite. Next, we have some crisp white onions. Dice just as finely, they'll add a bit of a bite without overplowering the other flavors. For those who like a touch of heat, we're bringing the jalapenos. These peppers come in varying degrees of spiciness, so choose based on your heat preference. A fine dice here ensures even distribution of that spicy kick throughout. For some garnish, we will chop up some green onions. To add a salty, savory element, let's crisp up some beautiful bacon in a pan. The smell alone will make your mouth water. Once it's nice and crispy, we'll crumble it into bits. This crumpled bacon will be the perfect fish and touch on our pulled pork masterpiece. While the pork finishes its resting period, about 30 minutes to go, we will warp up some of our crispy tots in the air fryer. This handy appliance is a real time saver. No need to preheat a whole oven. Simply toss your frozen tots into the air fryer basket and set it for 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, Give the tots a good shake to ensure even cooking. Now comes the fun part, seasoning. I like to use either a flavorful seasoning salt like Everglades All Purpose Seasoning or a barbecue rub depending on my mood that day. Sprinkle your choosing seasoning generously over the tots. Today, I chose a blend of paprika, chili powder, garlic powder, sea salt, oregano, and black pepper. Pop the seasoned tots back into the air fryer for another 10 minutes. In total, they'll cook for 20 minutes and emerge perfectly golden and crispy. Trust me, these air fried tots are addictive. I have a link in the description for this air fryer. With our crispy tots and delicious toppings prepped, it's time to tackle the star of the show, the pulled pork. There are a few ways to achieve perfectly shredded pork. You can use meat claws, also known as bear claws, for quick and easy shredding. Simply pull the claws 
apart through the meat, breaking it down into juicy strands. For more hands-on approach, you can shred the pork with your clean hands, pull and tease apart the meat fibers, creating a nice mix of textures. And here's a fun trick. The shoulder bone itself can be a handy shredding tool. Once the pork is cooked through, gently slide the bone out. It should come away cleanly. Then use the bone to mash and shred the pork. This method may leave some larger chunks, but you can easily break those up with your hands for a perfect pulled pork texture. If you're like me and have some baby soft, sit at a computer all day type of hands, then you're gonna want to have some heat resistant gloves as the meat is going to still be very warm. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, assembling the ultimate loaded pulled pork tater tots. First, create a bed of those crispy air fried tots. Next, pile on a generous helping of that juicy shredded pork. Now comes the fun part, toppings. Add a mix of the finely diced tomatoes, crispy onions, and a touch of heat from those jalapenos. Don't forget to smother it all in that incredible ooey gooey cheese sauce we whipped up earlier. Finally, sprinkle on a generous handful of those savory bacon crumbles. Take a moment to admire your creation, and oh man, doesn't it look absolutely delicious? I can't wait to dig in and enjoy every single bite of this. And there you have it, these loaded pulled pork tater tots with that out of this world cheese sauce are the perfect comfort food. They're so satisfying, you probably won't need any sides. But for a little extra flair, try adding some avocado slices or a dollop of sour cream. Get creative with the toppings. After all, the beauty of this recipe is the versatility. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe as that's the best way to support the channel. And if you really like this video, check out the playlist suggested at the end. It features recipes for steaks, chickens, pork, vegetables, briskets, and a whole lot more. For more great recipes, visit my website, smokybeginnings.com. And until next time, keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling. Have a good one.